Okay. We're a very right. progressive bunch. <laughs> so uh, over to you, Ardeth. Welcome. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, Guillermo and the Rotary Club of Ladner. I'm pleased to be joining you today. I wish I could be there in person, but as I said earlier, Mother Nature has had uh, uh, different ideas and um, the daffodils that were coming up in my garden last week are now under two feet of snow and uh, still snowing on the North Shore. So um, let's, ho <laughs> let's hope it quits soon. Um, I'm very pleased to talk to you today about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And thank you to uh, Peter for facilitating the Zoom presentation um, and allowing me to stay in my little comfortable house. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to, I'm going to introduce you to kind of the history of where diversity, equity, and inclusion is within Rotary International, how it, uh, how it came to be, what we've been doing in the district um, over the last year and a half or two. And um, particularly, Peter is going to assist me in the presentation uh, and he's going to talk about our district um, uh, survey that we did around uh, diversity, equity and inclusion. And as you all probably know, Peter has fast become our district survey guru. So we're very thankful to him. We're going to uh, we're going to give you some information, uh, and then we hope that that sparks a conversation within your within your club and within your friendships and and your broader community. We're going to talk about creating safe spaces or brave spaces. We're going to talk a little bit about personal bias and how you discover it in yourself and in others, and what you do to challenge it. Uh, we don't see things as they are, we see things as we are. And, uh, and that's something we need to remind ourselves about. We're going to be talking about bystanders and upstanders. And, and I'll challenge you to, um, to decide which one you are. Um, we're going to talk about learning respectful engagement and learning the language around respectful engagement. So in a nutshell, I'm going to uh, I'm going to introduce you to Rotary's DEI commitment, um, their guide for the future, and DEI's code of conduct, which is new and important, our member survey, and then some links um, that will be valuable to you for future conversation. So we're committed in Rotary to treating everyone with dignity and allowing everyone's voice to be heard. And Graham's um, comments a few minutes ago very much reflect um, the, the environment that diversity, equity, and inclusion is working in within Rotary, providing equitable opportunities for fellowship, service, and leadership. You know, Jennifer Jones has said that um, advancing DEI as a culture is a cultural change in Rotary, and it's a critical part of, of us evolving as an organization because it's the right thing to do. And we need to do better to be better. So cultivating a diverse and equitable and inclusive culture is essential to realizing our vision and in a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change. We all value diversity, although we've got different ideas, I think, about what diversity is. It, it means different things to different people. Um, the reality is it's more than um, people with uh, different colored skin. It, it includes the contributions of all people, of all backgrounds, with differences in ideas, thoughts, values, and beliefs, and in fact, that makes conversations that, that we have with one another much richer. We celebrate the contributions of all backgrounds. We strive to create an inclusive culture. And I know that um, a number of clubs in the district have done some um, really good work partnering in their communities um, so that each person has the necessary access to resources and opportunities and networks 
you know, we um, one of the things that happened to to a lot of us during COVID was we realized that how much we appreciated meeting face to face and how much the fellowship of meeting face to face meant to us. Um, and I think one of those challenges is now many of the clubs are looking for new venues to meet because for one reason or another, they're not able to meet in their previous locations. And one of the important things for us to be looking at is the issue of access. You can't talk about inclusion if an individual who's in a wheelchair or whose who's, uh, physical uh, situation is limited can't get up the stairs or when there's no elevator. So these are things we need to think about. Um, our rotor actors and interactors tell us that they don't feel that they have the access they need to the resources and opportunities and networks in Rotary. So we need to think about that as, as Rotary clubs. We need to create this inclusive culture so every person feels that they are valued and they belong. And I think it's that belonging that that uh, keeps us together. We, uh, we attract members. The big challenge is retaining those members. And I think it's these feelings of being valued and belonging that help that. And in line with our value of integrity, uh, we believe in transparency. So I'm going to uh, just quickly run through the Rotary's uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion guide for the future and the eight key themes that are driving Rotary's involvement. But I, before I go any further, I should tell you about historically how DEI came, how DEI came to Rotary. Diversity and inclusion has been around for a long time. Um, but in 2019, the task force on DEI was formed within Rotary International. And um, the, the commitment that we've just talked about was discussed with a number of consultants and RI chose PricewaterhouseCoopers to create a worldwide Rotary survey of Rotary clubs around the world. And there were 33,000 respondees um, and from that, we thought, um, those of us who are working on diversity and at the district level, were thinking that a report was going to come out of, of what PricewaterhouseCoopers did. But in fact, um, a number of um, sort of kind of special, instead of one total report, a number of, um, of separate reports came out. And one of those is the Guide to the Future. Um, the other one is a code of conduct and, and also individual membership surveys. So in terms of the guide for the future, the first one is that members, and, and we've talked about this, members are invested in making Rotary a more diverse organization and growing our membership and increasing our impact. I don't think there's a Rotary club anywhere uh, right now who isn't, that isn't concerned about growing our membership and increasing our impact. One of the great ways that we can do that is by forming partnerships in our communities. Um, second, the second theme is that Rotary's current DEI policies and procedures vary from one, reason, one region to another. Next slide, please, Peter. Leading to- um, um, Sorry, I'm having some- Are you? Okay, not to worry. Okay. It suddenly changed. Anyway, this leads to, as you can imagine, inconsistent experiences for people so that um, if they move from one region to another within Rotary, their experience is different and that can create difficulties, particularly when we're in the early days of uh, the policy. Members feel they don't have enough information or insight about our efforts and the lack of member awareness about our DEI statement and training courses and web page. So we will introduce those to you today and then hope that you will follow up on those further. 25% um, of the survey respondents don't know how to report discrimination or harassment at Rotary and felt there was the lack of a central place to report 
and and as a result some instances go unreported i think we all have been to rotary clubs where somebody is um kind of playing the clown or making inappropriate comments and um uh, and then this leads us to the issue of bystanders and upstanders because um if you're a bystander you kind of stand there and don't do anything and don't say anything um, and just kind of let things float by. Um, if you're an upstander, you speak to the president who speaks to the individual. And if it continues, um, there's a, and I'll show you in a minute, there is a, a, um, a code of conduct and a, a URL that people can contact uh, where specialists at Rotary will provide advice around the code of conduct. Um, and the number number seven, the cost of joining Rotary can be an obstacle to retaining members uh, and attracting new ones. And this is certainly the case as far as young people are concerned. And, um, and I think people at the other end of the spectrum as the, um, as people who are retired maybe on fixed incomes and the cost of living goes up. Um, maybe some Rotary memberships may be difficult for them to maintain. And younger members are telling us that they don't have a pathway to leadership and they're not offered meaningful opportunities to participate in decision making. Um, so this is something that we certainly need to uh, to think very seriously about. Rotary International for the first time has a rotor actor sitting on their board of directors. And, um, and I think that's a big step in the right direction. Just quickly, as far as our code of conduct is concerned, um, we expect that all Rotary members and people who visit our clubs and collaborate with us should be considerate and should contribute to a collaborative and positive environment where everybody feels that they are valued and respected. And as Graham said earlier, Rotary's way of operating is based on collaboration and cooperation, not competition. So where everybody has opportunities to advance. So the four areas of DEI's uh, code of conduct is the use of respectful language, being supportive, and fostering a welcoming and inclusive environment. And this has to do with the people that you invite to your meetings, um, making sure that, that you um, give them Rotary's messaging before they attend so that they understand that we're an inclusive environment, and celebrating diversity. And I think um, from what I understand, you do this well. Um, uh, celebrating ethnic celebrations within your community, things, and working with First Nations. Um, there's lo there's lots of uh, opportunities, I think, for us to become involved. Um, the next slide gives you the URL for um, DEI inquiries in the Code of Conduct. And um, so sorry, Peter, one, it's <laughs> one more, the, please. End of this section. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just watching the time I want to. Um, so harassment issues or concerns about the code of conduct can be addressed to um, dei.inquiries at rotary.com. And uh, we will be leaving uh, these slides uh, for the club, and that you may wish to, hopefully you don't, but if you do need to contact um, RI, you have the URL. And adult harassment issues can be report, reported to uh, the district support team. And uh, this next slide is the one that you would use. You know, we can't uh, embrace a new culture if we're not standing up for uh, that the things that happen uh, that fly in the face of that new culture and allow behavior to continue that is not, um, I guess, DEI amenable behavior. Um, we're going to move now to our, our member survey, which is 
really significant, and I've asked Peter if he would talk about it. He was very uh, key to designing the survey and to analyzing the outcome of the survey. And uh, then we'll explain where we go from here. So Peter, over to you. So the committee came up with uh, 15 recommendations based on, we did a focus group uh, series with 11 clubs, and then we went to an online survey of all district members. And the res result of all that, we pulled together a report, 15 recommendations, and the committee has been acting on those since uh, uh, almost uh, just over a year ago. So we're getting there, um, we're aiming to um, work on a consulting process or agency, if you like, to go out to the clubs and support them working at their pace to move ahead uh, without sort of kind of destroying what we all value in Rotary. So it, each club has to decide how it's going to do that. But with that, you know, a typical uh, uh, communication process is you start with awareness and people move up to understanding and commitment and then action when they kind of commit to it. So um, that's what we were looking for. And then I uh, was pleased to say in the survey, at least those who responded, that a lot of people um, are uh, committed to uh, DEI, not just aware and understanding. And so um, there's self and then, but then the people responding, looking at other people in their clubs, do they feel that they're committed or understand? So that's a fairly positive result, again, uh, based on those who responded to the survey. But, so it's encouraging, but there's still a lot to be done. There's 49 clubs and uh, and we will uh, work with them all. Sorry. So out of the survey, so the top five factors uh, to assess uh, diversity, a club might look at age, and that's you know uh, older members, but also younger members, and the lack of those are too many. I mean, uh, a balance of age, and we have to look at that seriously. We all understand that. But that's what the, the survey said to the members. Ethnicity, uh, again, we all understand that, but uh, we could be doing more in that area. What does our community of South Ladner, if not Ladner, look like? What's the makeup? And that's something we would address uh, as a consulting team about how to go about finding that out. What does your community look like? Some of you in this room are, have a very good knowledge about Delta, and so would we be able to uh, advise on what our community looks like and where are there are gaps. Uh, gender, uh, same thing. Uh, there's still that not that quite balanced. I don't know if it'll ever be perfect, um, but uh, we could uh, deal with uh, have uh, more members who are women. Um, ideas, of course, and occupation, and those other aspects. Uh, uh, artists mentioned the physical ability and so forth. Um, there's a fellow in uh, Mike Price in Seashell who's in a wheelchair and he gets out all over the community and he goes and visits community groups and he brings the kind of intelligence back to the club about what the community needs. And he's, he's got his physical uh, disability and he's out there doing it. So he's a, a great role model. Sure. Um, yeah. Then uh, the question about DEI and importance to the club. And right at the top, and really Art addressed that earlier, is a feeling of belonging. So if you've got an idea and you speak up, people listen to you and they don't sort of say, oh, we tried that in the past or whatever. Uh, or you come from another country or and perhaps don't speak English as well as you might or whatever the case may be, to feel that you belong and you're having a say and engaged in your club. It's not just sort of doing stuff, it's feeling you belong, it's how you feel. And then uh, grow and adapt. And that's what DEI really is all about. And relevance to the community. If we're seen as relevant to the Delta area, particularly Ladner, um, people will find that attractive and we will find it attractive. 
And again, and that all relates to sustainability. Uh, are we going to last another 65 years, if not longer, in, in this club, that is? And then it's not what you look like, but what you contribute. So respecting everyone for what they bring to the table. Uh, and then importance to the community. You can see the list there. It's, uh, it's our public image is that we're fair to all. Um, they were beneficial, you know, it's the four-way test. This is what the members said, and this came out in the four-way test, if you like, of structure, and build goodwill and reflect the community and, and the connection to all communities and serve all communities. So those are key things that, you know, any club can focus on to get them going as a structure uh, moving ahead with uh, DEI. So I'm not going to go through all these recommendations, but just quickly that the DEI should be a club-driven approach, and, and it's all bottom-up, what the club wants to do. This is a, a major strategy of Rotary, but this is a way to move to membership growth, sustainability, relevance, and all that sort of thing. So, uh, and then the consulting agency part, um, and then uh, as community groups learn about uh, Rotary, that they can achieve their goals in partnership or through Rotary. So that's an important thing. We can bring people in. Uh, they could become members, even if they're a member of another group, whatever the case may be. And some of us may join those other groups to uh, pursue uh, causes in the community. And again, the match the community profile and celebrate culture and recognition outreach going out and joining uh, various events in the community and celebrating uh, in addition to um, the Ladner Pioneer May Days, um, doing other things with other groups and inviting them in. Um, oh, there's Wilbur, what's he doing here? Um, popped up. <laughs> Wilbur, anyway, it's being recorded, Wilbur. <laughs> uh, and so to go out and do things and also bring people in around cultural events, it might be Diwali or it might be uh, uh, some other uh, community or, or cultural event and do more of that. And then uh, opportunities to learn about DEI. And just as artists stressed, just be, don't just be a bystander, be an upstander. And reducing those costs and increased flexibility to Austin Club is uh, rejigged everything. Uh, meeting now on Thursday mornings at the golf club without breakfast, ten bucks, right, for meeting, and their their membership's growing. So uh, well done to Austin. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so I'll hand this back now to Artis. Thank you, Peter. Um... These are the DEI resources that I mentioned. There are many, but uh, within Rotary, um, the first one, Peter, is that our uh, DEI landing page as well? Yes, on the district website. Just okay. search for DEI and you'll find the page and there's a lot of resources there if you want to delve into to that. So for those of you who may be wondering, um, the, the work that we have done as the uh, district-wide committee over the last year in particular since the survey has, is we've taken each of those 15 recommendations and we've done um, research and investigation around them. And they have been, uh, many of them have been posted on the DEI landing page. And you can see those on this, um, on this website. And then, of course, there's the Learning Center, the My Rotary Learning Center, and there are a number of modules, 14, I think, uh, for are centered around DEI, and they're very good. They're not very; they're sort of 20 minutes, uh, 25 minutes long, so you can do a couple or one uh, at a time, or however you want to do it. But uh, they're very good. And then the um, the YouTube moving from diversity to inclusive action is very good as well. And understanding personal bias and the possible impact on your world. It, you know, um, most of us, I think, because bias is usually unconscious, um, 
most of us don't appreciate the fact that we do have biases and sometimes we learn them around our dinner tables as we're growing up without even realizing that we are. Um, so it's very interesting uh, to do something like this. Um, this particular program is called Implicit and it's out of Harvard and it's quite fascinating. Um, you may be surprised with the results. I certainly was. Um, so that um, really brings to a close our formal presentation. I'm hoping that you might have some questions. Uh, what, I'll just share with you one of the things that we've done. My home club is West Vancouver Sunrise. And one of the things that we have done is we've uh, partnered with the Squamish Nation um, and with the uh, West Vancouver Foundation, the Hollyburn Sail Club and the West Vancouver Police. And we have a, a developed a community paddling program and um, so one of the things we're going to do in the spring, we have a, a big canoe and um, it's called Chuchioy and the, say, the Squamish Nation are coming over with their canoes and we're going to have a joint paddling opportunity and then have a learning circle uh, mm -hmm. after that and share stories. And I think that what this does is it, it helps to create that learning experience because we know that when we invite First Nations people to our meetings, they don't feel comfortable coming. And uh, and I think doing the outreach and meeting with the community groups is the way to share our diversity, equity and inclusion experience. So thank you very much, Guillermo. I don't know if we have time for questions, but. We certainly do, at least for a few ones. So I am opening the floor. Uh, any questions? Just a quick uh, comment to uh, Guillermo. Uh, Go ahead. The, difference, the difference between equality and equity, if everyone has a pair of shoes, that, that's equality. If they have a pair of shoes that fit, that's equity. <laughs> that's right. You know, um, Graham, that's a, that's a great analogy. Um, I have a picture of uh, three youngsters standing on the near side of a fence and um, the first youngster is tall and he can see over the fence he or she but in this case they're he's because they're looking at a baseball game um, the, the second youngster is shorter and has to stand on one box to see over the fence and the third little guy is really short and he's standing on three boxes so he can see over the fence so that's equity yeah. Mm -hmm. e equal if fairness. So yeah. it's not equality. Equality is equal and it's not it's not equal, but it's certainly um equitable. So thank you very much for that question. That was a good one. Or for that comment. Yeah. Okay. I am calling on uh Dennis to thank our speakers. You don't have the uh you have a card? Oh, thank you, Ardeth and Peter, for a great uh, presentation. Speaking of sort of my own personal, uh, I'm still in the corporate world, and uh, uh, it was Raymond James, and we have a, a whole diversity, you know, it's, program. It's, it's yeah. expected now. It's expected in the corporate world. It's expected in the uh, service world. It's expected in the service club world. So, so on behalf of the uh, Rotary Club, we want to. Uh, Officially thank uh, and welcome to Ed too, uh, if he's still on. It's not what we give, but what we share. Thank you for being a part of our program. We appreciate that you took the time to share your knowledge and talents with us. Our contribution will be made to the Rotary Foundation Polio Eradication Campaign to recognize your presentation to both Peter and to Ardeth, to our club. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dennis. Yeah. And uh, before going, uh, I'm going to call on our judge, uh, incoming President Brian Cole, to um, go around for happy and sad dollars. We end the recording. Then. And oh, you can end the recording, but I want them to stay oh, okay. until. Okay, so carry on. Uh, Brian?
So get ready to alleviate your wallets. <laughs> 